Hi guys and welcome to another Wargame Red Dragon tutorial video with me Bubblebox and today we're going to be looking at tanks. Now tanks are great and very fun to use. They are amongst the most powerful, best armoured and also most expensive units in Wargame Red Dragon um, as long as you're not including the command ships of course. Wargame Red Dragon divides its tanks basically into cavalry tanks and then main battle tanks of different price ranges. Other players tend to divide them into sort of light, medium and heavy tanks but in the end a tank's a tank and how good that tank is depends on the three parameters which define that tank which are its mobility, its firepower and its armour and as you may well know tanks especially the older ones tend to be a bit of a trade-off amongst these parameters and you can only really get all three of these things to a good effect with the much more modern and of course much more expensive types of tank. Now most tanks have guns that have one of three ranges either 1925 as with the starship over here on the right, 2100 meters and then up to 2275 meters with their main gun as shown with this M1A2 Abrams on the left here. It's important consideration, the, the range that is, when choosing your tanks as often the first to get a shot off and hit will tend to win a gunfight between two tanks. Now also the type of ammunition that they fire is important and they can either fire this KE, kinetic type ammunition, or they can fire this heat high explosive, high explosive anti-tank type infam, um, um, ammo. As you can see, the KE, the closer it gets from to its target, the higher its AP value will rise. So if this so the AP value for this tank is actually 24, which is quite immense. I mean it is a really powerful and very expensive tank. But the closer that it that this tank gets to its target, the higher it, the AP power will actually get higher and higher. However, with the heat one the AP value will actually remain the same whatever the range of that um, tank to its target. So you really need to where you can use the range to your advantage depending on the types of, range of, of round that you're firing and also the range of your particular gun as well. Now another parameter that's really important is a tank stabilizer. Now Stabilizers allow your tanks to keep firing on the move and a moving tank is much harder to target and hit than a static one and also those tanks with kinetic rounds can get closer to their targets and fire as they're doing so which makes them really really awesome weapons. And you can see for example on the Starship the much cheaper type of tank here the AP, the sorry, the stabilizer is quite weak, five percent. So that's five percent of its forty percent accuracy. So unlikely to hit anything while it's still moving. Whereas the stabilizer on the Abrams here has a st has sixty five percent. So sixty five percent of its sixty five percent accuracy will remain whilst it's moving backwards and forwards on the battlefield. So tanks with stabilizers are excellent weapons, especially if you've got the ability and the patience to micro them backwards and forwards and keep them moving as much as you can on the battlefield. Now one thing tanks do generally need to be effective is open spaces and unfortunately these are few and far between in Wargame Red Dragon maps although they do occur and this is why a lot of battles in Wargame Red Dragon are fought mainly with infantry vehicles and helicopters and such like although there, as I say there are some situations in which which do favour uh, a nice tank battle on occasion and th this is one situation I've got myself into here where I decide to bring out tanks and support to attack the enemy because mainly this is a wide open space you can see there's hard, no buildings and very few trees and tree lines where they can hide infantry and anti-tank weapons. Now one really important thing to know is that when pushing with tanks they must be supported in order to be effective and by support I mean you've got to have anti-air units uh, ideally you'd have some either some mortars or some artillery in order to take out any ATGM positions you might come across 
and also if there are buildings in the way when you're doing your tank bush don't get your tanks too close to the buildings because they may have infantry inside which could fire rocket propelled grenades and such like at your tanks and do them some real damage if not take them out so you can see here I've got my three challengers I've got anti-air support in the form of these ADATs here it's got a 2,800 meter range so would be able to take out any helicopters that come their way. I've also got some infantry support with these Milan 2s and the reason I've got these Milan 2s although I've got some um, artillery back in the base I haven't got any mortars to for quick support so I've got these Milan 2s and you can see they've already spotted two ATGM vehicles these Sturms very powerful with very powerful ATGM we weapons but they haven't got any defense against infantry so I could then use these infantry to push up and try and take out these Sturms and then I can move my challengers back forwards gain of course these challenges have got fantastic stabilizers they can move backwards and forwards all day and take hits because of their heavy armor and I've got the adats here as well I can also take out armored vehicles um, as well actually so that's what we mean by support I've also got this uh, recon unit here this ferret so we can see what's going on so you need anti-air units you need recon you need possibly some artillery or something that you can take out the anti-tank weapons for and then you've got your tanks dotted about fairly spaced out so they're not too open to um, attacks from aircraft and such like don't ever clump them together into sort of threes and fours sometimes people put them into twos with the, which is acceptable but don't ever put them into threes or fours because they just make too easy a target now if you do push forward with your tanks and I did that actually in this game and I will link this game in the description I'm going to record this game this is a game I played with Silver Raptor one of my subscribers who's learning the game and I'm going to post this because it was a really interesting battle and hopefully I'll have this up in a day or two and put it in the description and if you do run out of anti-air when you're pushing your units forward just pause and wait for the anti-air units to get reloaded or until you can bring up more anti-air units because tanks pushed up without AA support are a recipe for disaster and they invite being killed with anti-aircraft choppers or anti-aircraft planes but tanks such as these with correct support can be game changing or even game winning on occasion and the great thing about heavy tanks like these challengers is that they can take a hit and they can keep pushing forward so we'll start off with the American tanks and starting to have a look at the Abrams series the M1 Abrams series and we'll start with the most, most basic model it costs 80 points it's got three weapons a couple of machine guns which can be useful in the last minute sort of stand if you have to fight against um, infantry or even choppers if you can run towards the choppers shoot and choppers down its main weapon here not overly impressive it's only got an AP power of 13 range middling with 2100 meters um, an okay-ish kind of accuracy at 40 percent and uh, some sort of a stabilizer although again not brilliant so this is the basic model of your M1 Abrams it's got nice front armor actually of 15 okay side armor and it's got some back and top armor as well to protect it against artillery and such like pretty speedy across ground nice road speed strength of 10 as most of the tanks have got and a decent autonomy as well but as we move up the Abrams they get better and better um, I do think uh, I mean a lot of people love the Abrams um, they are nice tanks although I do think they're a little bit overrated um, in this particular game I'm sure in real life they're fantastic so then we've got the um, so that's the M1 Abrams next we've got the MI M1 IP so this has got the same main gun it's exactly the same with a slightly better stabilizer um, a slightly better AP power and that's about what we can say everything else is pretty much exactly the same same secondary weapon same tertiary weapon with the Browning and the M240 so just a little bit of an upgrade with the main gun and it costs you 10 points extra and then we move up to the M1A1 Abrams and this is where they get a little bit more meaty this has got a much better main gun now it's got an extended range to 2275 meters it's got a better much better accuracy at 55% a nice stabilizer now with 50% on the move 
a decent AP power so it can do some damage to most other tanks or well all other tanks really with an AP power of 19 remember these are kinetic rounds so the closer it gets the more damage it's going to do and then it's got some like, decent suppression and stuff decent ish um, off-road speeds probably a little bit slower because it's better armored it's got some well actually the other one's got 17 it's the same same armor as the uh, M1, M1 IP um, actually um, with 17 front and 7 sides so not too shabby on the armor front and it's got the same two machine guns there so pretty nice tank that one and then we move up yet another grade up to the M1 a1 H A Abrams now this has got pretty much the same main gun I believe um, I think it's exactly the same main gun yep same accuracy same stabilizer same AP power everything's pretty much exactly the same so the main difference between this one and the previous one is in its armor so this one's got 20 front armor and eight side armor which is impre uh, an improvement over the previous model slightly so basically for this one it's exactly the same except you're paying paying for a little bit of extra armor although with that extra armor the speed over over rough ground does actually stay pretty much exactly the same and the autonomy stays the same as well which is nice and then we move up to the big daddy of them all oops hold on let's get that pinned there the big daddy at 180 points the m1a two abrams you, know, you don't i think you only get two of these or one if you want it vetted up so again main gun has been upgraded this time so this time you've got a really really nice 65 percent accuracy a huge 65 percent stabilizer so this is going to be really really efficient you're going to want to keep this moving especially if, if it's in sight with of the enemy and they can see where it is they're going to target this for 180 points you need to keep it moving and if you're not using it get it hidden as best you can and a massive ap power of 24 as well and it's got a better um, off-road speed at 65 you do you are paying for it at 180 you can't get a lot of these guys the other weapons are pretty much exactly the same the armor has also been improved 22 front armor nine side armor five back armor and the same for top armor this is also a prototype weapon so you can only get this in the USA deck you can't get this one in a blue four deck so that's the big daddy of the American tanks now as we move down the list they do get a they're not not anywhere near so impressive now we've got a very basic one over here the m4 8a5 now this guy, um, minimum range, 1,925. AP power is only nine, which is pretty terrible. Front armor's six, then three. I mean, it is a proper tank, that, um, built in 1975. Speed off-road's quite poor as well. Autonomy is not that brilliant, so you're probably gonna refuel, have to refuel this. Um, it doesn't look too awesome either, the shape of it. I have to say, with that thing stuck on the top of the turret. So, but only 25 points. You would get a lot of these. Um, fires KE rounds, so if the closer you get it, the more effective it's going to be. But um, again, with a stabilizer of only 5%, yeah, it's, it's just not a very decent tank at all, unless you're going to spam it for some reason. Then you've got the uh, slight upgrade. With a slight upgrade, you get a slightly better, it's the same range on the gun, but you get um, a slightly better accuracy, same stabilizer, a slightly better AP power from 9 to 11. I mean, these, these aren't going to take out big tanks, but they'll take out armored cars and could do some damage to, I suppose, to medium tanks if they can get side shots and stuff like that. And very poor, actually, off-road speed of, of only 40 Ks. So not brilliant at all. And then that one is going to upgrade to the M601A1AOS. And then again, a little bit more of an upgrade. Accuracy, a little bit better. Stabilizer, a lot better actually at 30%. So you do get a decent stabilizer on the main gun of this tank for 40 points instead of the 30 points and the, everything else is pretty much exactly the same speed off-road again pretty poor and then we go up to this one the m6 whoops did we just do that one no we didn't no pin that the m6 
AO1E era or ERA. This time the gun pretty decent. Um, 2100 range, actually a 50% and a stabilizer of 35%. Not too shabby, um, although it, the price does increase to 70 points. The armor is okay, it's sort of middling for the tanks, not brilliant but not terrible with a front of 12 and a side of 5. And it's got the standard Browning secondary weapon, as has the previous model of this tank. It's got a slightly better speed off-road, and the autonomy is 500. And then we've got the... Get rid of that, pin that. This guy, which it, it looks pretty decent tank, and it should be, at 165 points, very expensive. It's a prototype as well, so you can only get this in the American deck. Same range on the main gun, it is the same kind of main gun, but this time a better accuracy, 60% accuracy, so it's going to hit more times than it misses, and a stabilizer of 55%, very, very good, and a really nice AP power now of 22 points, although again, it's costing you 165 points to get this guy in. Speed off-road is not too bad either at 60, it's a lot better than the previous ones. So a much better upgrade. It's got two machine guns mounted on top as well, like the Abrams. So that, that tank actually looks a lot better. And indeed, it is a lot better. Then we'll move on to these Sheridans. Now, the Sheridan's quite an old kind of tank, 1965. Um, these aren't brilliant, to be honest. They're one of the few Blue 4 tanks that have... Um, ATGM missiles, ATGMs or anti-tank missiles, these Schilega Cs. Now these have a range of 2,625 which is pretty decent range um, for a tank and an accuracy of 40%, 7 missiles at 40% so a couple of them might hit. AP powers not too bad at 16 and uh, yeah and um, armor very very poor though two 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 and one so really this is a less of a tank and more of an anti-tank weapon that you want to sit in ambush really only costs 45 points so you could use it for that specific purpose but as for attacking enemy positions quite limited with this tank because mainly because the main gun quite a short range actually only 30 percent and the stabilizer is not brilliant at 15 percent and maybe power of only 11 and these are heat rounds as well so they don't get more accurate the closer you get to the enemy off-road speed is quite decent and it's got a decent ish autonomy and it's also amphibious as well so we'll go across rivers but again limited uses for that one i think then we've got the mbags uh, for 60 points, um, decent sort of range, 2275. Um, accuracy at 45%, stabilizer at 45%, AP power of 16, all sort of, sort of medium sort of figures for a tank of 60 points, what you might expect. Browning machine gun, good off road speed, and good on road speed, of course, as of all the tanks. And the autonomy lets it down a little bit, and it is a prototype, so you can only get that one in the American deck. Then we've got this many these patterns now some people like these patterns i don't really like them very much um they sort of seem to me a little bit of a leftover from sort of world war ii in a way um they've not got great firepower i mean this one's only got a range of 1925 actually 40 percent poor stabilizer only 20 percent ap power terrible really for a tank of only 11. armors pretty trivial nine front four side and four back it is only 40 points you could sort of use it as a kind of a spam tank you're bound to get a lot of these if you decide to take a set of these in your deck and the browning machine gun um, okay off-road um, autonomy not too bad so that's your pattern and then you've got your upgrade let's click that your your uh, m60a3 pattern with a better range gun, everything else is pretty much exactly the same. You just got a bit of a better range there on your main gun and the Browning, and you're paying 20 points. Basically, I think just for the extra range, it looks like, yeah, a little bit better ready to fire as well. And everything else pretty much exactly the same for your extra 20 points. Now, the Super M60, another prototype tank for the US. Nice off-road speed. Um, 
an okay main gun it's 75 points so yeah it's, it's fairly expensive for an accuracy of 40 percent and a stabilizer of 30 percent not too shabby i suppose um yeah okay rate of fire and a browning machine gun as well decent front armor okay-ish side armor as well good top armor actually also oh, that's back armor and some top armor as well for against artillery attacks and such like then we've got the starships and these are sort of a little bit like the sheridans not overly impressive in my opinion um they've got these shilega anti-tank missiles again with a two four uh anti-tank missiles the two four five oh meter range actually though is only 30 percent and you get nine of them ap power 16 not brilliant for an anti-tank missile um they are only 35 points they're very very cheap very poor off-road speed though if you're trying to get them into position or get them out of trouble autonomy is not too bad the main gun it's a heat one remember so you know the range is what the you know you need to have this uh, the, the power of this weapon doesn't increase the closer you get to your target Accuracy is 40 percent terrible stabilizer you can't really use this on the move very well at all and a terrible ap power as well but 35 really really it's an anti-tank weapon it's got okay front armor for an anti-tank weapon but again it's for ambushes to fly like that and it's only got an accuracy of 30 percent so not an overly impressive tank in my opinion then we've got the upgrade of the starship here the uh, m60a2e2 and this weapon has got exactly the same main gun but the shilega is also exactly the same by the looks of it actually oh it's just got an upgrade on the tertiary weapon here it's got this guy with kinetic firing kinetic rounds so it's got an auto cannon instead of the machine gun fires kinetic rounds so the closer you get the more damage you do it can also shoot down at helicopters at a decent range so basically you're paying an extra 10 pound 10 pounds an extra 10 points for this tertiary weapon here and the armor is exactly the same and the rest of the stats are all the same except for the off-road speed which is slightly improved up to 50 k's last but certainly by no means least is the main battle t uh, sorry the, yeah the mbt 70 the main battle tank 70. now some people like this and some people hate it i kind of like it it's got these shilega missiles again this is another prototype available only in the USA deck. 2625 meter range, which isn't too shabby at all. AP power of 16, which is okay, and actually 40, which is okay, but it's only got four of these. So it's sort of another one of these hide and seek ones, you know, could perhaps support tank pushes, maybe something in those roles, or hide and do ambushes. It's got an auto cannon. So it can attack helicopters if need be as well. So that's quite a useful extra weapon there. And the main gun isn't brilliant with 2,100 range, 45% accuracy and only a 5% stabilizer. So this really needs to be still when it's firing. So you want to either ambush with this or have it on attack move. And uh, it could do some damage, but you'd have to be fairly lucky. But I mean, I quite like it. Well, that's the American tanks. I mean, other Blue 4 tanks um, to look out for. Well, the British, I guess the British Challengers. you got the um, French Leclerc, but the French have got a load of nice, fast tanks. They're not the best armoured in the world, but they've got some nice weaponry and they're very fast if you use them carefully. And then there's the uh, Germans. Germans have got a lovely um, group of tanks. They've got the Leopards, all the different variants of the Leopards, and they've got the Kalers as well. Have a look at the Kalers. They're a pretty nice medium type of tank to use, in, especially in war game where some of the fighting is fairly close quarters. And moving on now to the Russian tanks. Now, the Russians have got, in my opinion, the best selection and probably a couple of the best tanks in the game they've got awesome armor basically of the russians and they loan out their armor to their allies as well although the, the types of armor they loan out to their allies tend to be the slightly older versions um they tend to keep the more modern stuff for themselves now i won't go through every single one in a lot of detail i'll skip over a few of them but i'll point out the more uh, interesting ones just for the sake of uh, keeping this video to a reasonable length however we're going to start off with this boy the t-34 the old world war ii titan 
the tank that allegedly won the World War Two, World War Two, especially one World won World War Two for the Russians on the uh, Eastern Front. Mass-produced tank, and indeed in War Game Red Dragon, you get a huge number of these if you put these in your deck. They only cost ten points. Yes, individually they are shit. I mean, look at them. Range one five seven five, accuracy thirty percent, stabilizer crap five percent. Although it has got one, AP power eight, abysmal HE power three, so it can shoot at infantry and stuff. Um, suppression not brilliant, rate of fire not fantastic. Um, it's got a machine gun which uh, could be useful for certain things, and then it's got not brilliant armor and a speed of only fifty off road. Oh, the on road speed not too bad, an autonomy of four hundred and fifty. Now. Do you know what? I've actually got this in a lot of my decks because what's it useful for? It's useful for a spam tank. It costs 10 points. You get a shitload of these things. And what I do, the only thing I really use it for is if um, if game and we and we want to and we want to finish playing a total destruction reduction or anything, I'll just spam a whole load of these things and I'll just run them all the way to their base, find their CV and kill their CV. I've done it on a couple of occasions. It seriously works if you've got a depleted enemy. And it's really fun to do. So that's the only reason, the only time I would use these. They are really shit tanks, but basically you need to use them like locusts. So you send in a swarm of them. You don't send them in one at a time. And they can use their machine gun. Then you can stop and attack move them with their kinetic rounds once they get close enough. Next we've got this PT-90. Now I see a lot of people using the PT-90. And I've, I've tried it in a few decks, but I've never had great success with it. I mean, it's only 25 points. And it's got these Malukta... Um, anti-tank gun weapon, anti-tank um, missiles um, with an okay range and okay accuracy but you only get four of them so you know you might get one or two to hit if you're lucky AP power is fairly middling at 15 as well so it really depends on whether these things hit or not and they've got a very short range of course so are they likely to get the first shot off they're okay perhaps for ambushing they've got a nice accuracy with the main gun but again it needs to get really nice and close and it's got a very poor AP power as well so really only good against sort of very light tanks perhaps medium tanks in the side and armoured vehicles only cost 25 you do get a lot of them but I've tended to take this out of my deck now they are amphibious as well and uh, it is a prototype so you only get these in the Russian decks these BMP uh, 685s, uh, 685s, I see a few people getting these as well. They've got a nice accuracy, but again, you need to get them nice and close for them to have any effect. Well, they have got a fairly decent um, stabilizer of 30%, but the AP power lets them down a bit as well. Got a good off-road speed, though, so I suppose if they, you've got enough of them, you can get them towards the enemy with their KE rounds. You might do some damage on attack move or something, I don't know. Um, but the, again, the armor for these isn't brilliant. Then you've got the T55 series and you start off with the most basic one which isn't very good at all and I won't go through them all but then you go up, up, up a gear and once you get past the first two so this is a really basic one the first one the gun range isn't brilliant the accuracy isn't brilliant stabilizer it has got one but again it's not brilliant not the most not the most fantastic tank and again if you want to spam one just get the T34 rather than the T55A and then the T55 AM is a slight upgrade with a slightly better main gun. And then you get to the T55 AM2. Now this has got actually an ATGM weapon with an accuracy of 40% and a nice AP power of 17. So this isn't too shabby as an anti-tank weapon as long as you don't expose it to big tanks because it's only got a front armour of 10 and a side armour of 5. But it has got a nice fairly meaty anti-tank weapon be able to tank out sort of medium tanks and armored vehicles and such like and it can defend itself with its main gun as well with an accuracy of 45 percent it's got a bit of a stabilizer in there as well and some okay off-road speed it costs 60 so it's sort of a medium sort of price tank and then you can move up to the t55 am let's just pin that amv which has basically got the same main gun the same has it got the same it looks exactly the same to me. Everything looks exactly the same, apart from off-road speed is a little bit better. So I can't see the real advantage in this. It's got the same Diego, same Bastion, same DIOT. It's ten points more. It's got well, you pay ten points more, you get slightly better armor and a slightly better off-road speed. So I don't really know whether you 
go for that or the basic one then you've got the uh, t62 series and again the basic one is very basic 1961 and then you move through them they get gradually better until you get to the t62m and the t62mv1 with their anti-tank weapons now i'll keep going on about the anti-tank weapon missiles because the russians have got an abundance of tanks with anti-tank missiles so in a in a straight tank to tank fight the russians should do really really well if um, there's no other sort of things to impact on the fight such as other support planes and stuff like that so these guys have got a range of 2800 which is really really good the accuracy of the upgraded one is 50 percent which again is very good and the accuracy of this one is still 40 percent so not too shabby but it's only got four, we've got four here and only three so that probably weighs it out if it gets all its missiles off um, ap power is very good on these anti-tank missiles as well and then it's got the main gun which is pretty much exactly the same between the two so you pay a little bit more for just a bit of a better, better accuracy and some little bit of better armor again um speed off road not fantastic especially for the basic t62m model although the autonomy of these guys is pretty damn good so you probably wouldn't have to re reload these guys with uh, gas before you got to the front armor's not fantastic so you want to keep them behind perhaps a heavier tank so they can use their atgms against the enemy's tanks but still be protected by the armor from your heavier tanks perhaps perhaps so then we've got the t64 series again the more basic model to start off with and then moving up you move up through the series and you get your anti-tank weapons and then you move up to the big boy here the t64 bv very nice tank um, for the cost 150 so you've got uh, your anti-tank weapon again not too actually not too fantastic but it's got a nice ap power of 22 and an okay accuracy of 45 so if a couple of these hit they're going to do a lot of damage to any other tank coming their way and uh, a main gun that it can defend itself with um, once it's used up its anti-tank weapons always waiting to be resupplied it's got a good off-road speed as well so it should be able to get out of the way and a nice autonomy as well of 600 k's it's got a good front armor at 17 so that's not too shabby that one at all and again the this the, the others aren't too bad as well and uh, once you get past these the first two models then we get on to the t72s now I quite I've got quite a soft spot for the t72s we've got the basic model here again I'm I, I am tempted sometimes to use this as sort of a spammy type tank although you can use this for sort of infantry support close to towns and stuff like that it's got a little bit of front armor of 11 it's got a, a gun that shoots he power of four so it could be used for sort of supporting infantry perhaps when your infantry are rushing into a town um, this could be firing upon the infantry in the town with an HE power of four and do them a bit of damage so it could be used for that kind of a role perhaps again it's got a good off-road speed and a good autonomy but then as you move through these t72s the last one gets really good this t72b is a nice tank it does cost 120 points but it is a nice tank it's got this really nice anti-tank weapon 2625 meters actually a 50 percent ap power of 22 so half of them are going to hit and it's got a decent ish kind of main weapon which it can protect itself with once these weapons have been used up or you're waiting resupply it's got a very fast off-road speed for a tank and a very good autonomy for a tank as well and a decent front armor of 15 and okay-ish side armor of eight then we've got some more t72s along here some slightly upgraded models we've got the t72 obr 1987 and you can see you can see a nice anti-tank weapon weapon decent ish main gun pretty much similar but look at this autonomy now 900 you wouldn't need to refuel that that's going to get all the way to the battlefield even on some of the biggest maps and it's got a nice off-road speed as well the t72 bobr 1989 pretty similar stats down here um, but um, okay oh let's just pin that just to see what the difference is pin that pin that so the main gun is actually exactly the same oh the main gun is actually slightly better with a better stabilizer 
the anti-tank weapon is actually exactly the same and the other stats look pretty damn similar if not the same as well so this is an upgrade in the main gun a slight upgrade um, whether it's worth the extra 20 points I'm not sure just for a bit of extra stabilizer I don't know about that let's pin that one and have a look at the most upgraded model the T72BU <coughs> 180 points now and the main gun upgraded again this time you've got actually a 50 percent that is pretty awesome and a stabilizer of 40 percent AP powers up as well to 23 which is very very good so a really nice main gun on this one now and the same anti-tank missile weapon so if you had this trundling forward with perhaps with some support trucks going with it to reload its anti-tank weapons as well um, this could do some serious damage the autonomy is down on this one at 550 and also the off-road speeds down a little bit but still an awesome tank then we move on to the big boys the t80s um, the t80 series you've got the standard t80 um, lots of people used to get these in their land battle not so many get them now because they're not as powerful in this game because you've got lots of upgraded tanks now and lots of better tanks in this game now but it's still an okay-ish one perhaps not oh, not quite worth the 85 points maybe with an axi of 35 and only a stabilizer of 25 it's got a good range um, that's about all you can say for it really and then you get the t80b which is a much nicer tank mainly because you've got these anti-tank weapons again actually of 40 percent but only three so not too many um yeah and the same main gun as previous um so a bit of an up mainly it's the extra thing is this anti-tank weapon and then you've got the eight eight o b v same anti-tank weapon the cobra and the main gun is slightly improved, an axi of 40% and a stabilizer of 35% and an AP power now of 18 up from 16. So not too bad. Off-road, pretty fast for a tank. Autonomy, not too bad. And then we move on to the big boys, the T80A, the T80U and T80UM. Now the T80A is a nice tank. I used to have this all the time in my deck. I don't have it all the time now, but I really like this tank. It is a prototype, so you can only get it in the Russian deck. And it's got these nice reflex anti-tank missiles. Now this time they've got an accuracy of 50% and an AP power of 22. So these are really nice weapons, especially if you can keep them resupplied from a logistics vehicle. And a nice main gun as well. 40% accuracy, stabilizer of 35%, so it can roll backwards and forwards firing whilst it's getting resupplied with these reflex missiles, perhaps. Off-road, pretty decent. Then you've got your T-80U. Um, one of the big boys in the game, um, reflex missiles again, three of those, pretty much exactly the same as before, but a better main gun with an accuracy of 40% and a stabilizer of 35%. Really nice off-road speed of 75 kilometers per hour now, so I can catch up with pretty much other tanks. But the armor sets this aside. I think the last one, the armor was 16, 10, 4, and 3. This time we've got an armor of 20 front, 9 side. So very, very nice armor. And then finally, we've got the T80UM, the big daddy of them all. Armor is exactly the same. It's got a better main gun. It's got the same reflex. It's got so actually, it's got an upgraded Invar. A guided missile 2800 range still but 60% accuracy this time 24 AP power pretty damn awesome and then uh, the main guns upgraded as well 55% accuracy and the stabilizer of this one is 50% so this guy is a match for any tank in the game um, on the move not on the move whatever it's got these anti-tank weapons and a pretty awesome main gun as well very very nice tank you only get i think one of these if you want it vetted up or two if you don't want it vetted up it's got a nice autonomy as well for a big tank and a very very nice off-road speed so that's the ruskies or the russians should i say and that's it for uh this tutorial i hope you got something out of it as i say i'm gonna post in a day or maybe two days a game which i'll put in i'll put in the description of this tutorial once i've uploaded that where i do do a tank push it's actually a british deck using challenges and uh, that'll be up in a couple of days so thanks for watching guys please do comment like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one